Hi, my name is Bruce Baldwin, and uh, I am one of the many faces of ACES here in Buchanan, California. You know, my family growing up was upper middle class, grew up in Sacramento. I think before we get to the growing up, I think there's something that's important in my own ACES story, and that's that I was an adopted child in the 1950s. If you don't know much about the way they did adoption in the 50s, the belief was we don't want the mother to ever see the baby after giving birth because she might change her mind. And we've worked so hard to place this family. So the practice at the time was as soon as the child was born was to whisk the child away. And you know, we now know how traumatic that is, that there needs, there's this immediate connection that needs to be made to fire off all kinds of things in the brain. So for me, that is the very first, my first childhood trauma was at the moment of my birth. Well, in terms when and how I became aware of my adverse childhood experiences really has only been in the last few years as we've learned about ACEs and childhood trauma and the effect it has on people. Now, I've known about what that did to me, my own substance abuse, my own you know, early use of drugs and alcohol you know, for many years. I've been clean and sober now for 32 years. Uh, the first 30 years of my life, um, you know, starting from about age 12, I was pretty much drunk or stoned every day on something and progressively worse and progressively higher. So, I mean, I, I knew that the effects were there. I didn't really understand how that related to my childhood until I learned about ACEs, saying probably around 2005 or 2006 when the research started to become kind of widely known. It, it like, clicked for me. Through my own work, I work uh, in prevention and in drug and alcohol prevention and, and sometimes in treatment and recovery. And, you know, when that started to come into that field, it really clicked for me that, oh my goodness, you know, this, you're talking about me when we're talking about ACEs. And, you know, I kind of always knew that I was a little different than most of my friends. Um, I went through my first drug treatment program when I was 16 years old. Um, got in trouble at high school and, you know, um, was expelled from high school and my parents took me to a drug treatment program and they were pretty primitive back then. That was a long time ago, back in like 1970, I think. And um, I didn't really get a lot of help. Like the counselor was like, it's okay if you smoke a little weed and drink a little wine. You just can't be doing that other stuff, you know, which of course wasn't true for me. Um, and I can remember going through these groups and my, my dad would drive me down there every uh, Thursday night and all the other guys in the group were like ex-convict heroin addicts, you know, and I'm sitting in this circle and these guys are, you know, hey kid, you know, you keep doing dope, you're going to be like me, you know, and I, and I kind of knew they were right. And so I think from that age, from like 16 on, I kind of had this conscious awareness that my drug and alcohol use was a little, over, well, a lot over the line compared to other people's. But at that time, I didn't really relate it to my childhood experiences other than, as I think so happen, often happens with childhood trauma, I, I took the victim role quite, you know, quite well. Oh yeah, I, I messed up because my mom drank alcohol. You know, it's all her fault. You know, I, I did play that card for many, many years, but uh, I got clean sober when I was 31. And, um, and from that point forward, I kind of started to own it and take it for myself and realize that, yeah, you know, no matter what caused it, it's up to me to do something about it. I'm actually grateful for some of the childhood trauma that I had because it's led me to a way of life and a way of being that I don't think I would have found otherwise. Now, if I could go back and undo the pain and hurt I caused other people during my 20 years of drinking and drug use, I would gladly go back and, and do that. But I also know that the pain and trauma that I caused, and the childhood trauma I caused to my own children, um, have also helped me to really see how, you know, how, how that kind of behavior shapes people and hurts people and has led me to a deep commitment to you know, try to give back, to try to do something to help other people avoid those same kinds of um, experiences and hurt. And I'm not sure I would have gotten there without the level of trauma that I had. And I think what shapes my thinking and my journey and my work and my career now are the notion that 
anyone can rise above. You know, my three best friends from high school are all dead. And you know, one OD'd, well, one was killed in prison after being sentenced, he would have spent the rest of his life in prison. And one uh, died from complications related to drug use where his whole body just kind of shut down. He died when he was 41 in a hospital. Um, and I'm alive. And my drug use wasn't any worse or better than theirs, but I had someone, I had some people that believed in me as a child and I had a fifth grade teacher who taught me to learn to love to read. And uh, as crazy as this sounds, reading kept me connected to the real world. And my, my three friends didn't have that. It's one of the 40 developmental assets we talk about, you know, helping kids learn to love reading can protect them from a lot of stuff. And when I first heard that, I realized my fifth grade teacher probably saved my life. So um, for me, I think teaching young people how to be resilient and how to rise above and how to, uh, you know, move forward with their own lives, no matter what their childhood was like, is extremely important because the research is clear. My own experience informs me that the research is right, that uh, that no matter what your circumstances, you can rise above that if you have some help. I don't think many of us can do it on our own, but with, with proper help, I think we all can.